Today on the Heaven's Metal Podcast, we're meeting in a parking garage because this is a clandestine conversation. We're going to talk about my experience in being a rock critic and getting albums and demo tapes and submissions sent to me for review. And when it comes to great albums, I find that in my experience and my memory and looking back over the years, the albums that blew me away the most are the ones that I sought out. I remember uh, Striper showing up at Maranatha Village for the 10-year anniversary at Maranatha Village, a Christian bookstore in Santa Ana, Costa Mesa, California. They pulled up in their limousine for this big celebration and hot off the press from Enigma Records, uh, the first copies of the yellow and black attack on black vinyl. These were like before the yellow vinyl. Um, anyway, that was amazing. The same summer, the summer of 84, I remember r rushing to the store to get Kerry Livgren AD timeline, uh, a new group that he formed after leaving Kansas. Um, and so the ones you seek out and you go to the store and you know, are, are highly anticipating getting, um, those are always, always fun and the anticipation builds up and that's great. Oftentimes you have a friend turn you on to something. I remember uh, uh, friends you know, coming back to the Lord as a prodigal son and, and wanting to acquaint myself with Christian rock and friends turning me on to the Daniel Band and Rez Band and, and Jerusalem. I remember getting a hold of that Jerusalem album, Warrior, for the first time. And then my buddy Kerry Womack, who later went on to front the band One Bad Pig, he turned me on to this artist named Jeff Johnson. It was like kind of like Alan Parsons Project meets Pink Floyd, kind of a art, new agey kind of uh, vocal, uh, ambient artist. And I was so mad at my friend. Why did you wait this long to turn me on to this artist? I love this. So I was actually mad at him for a little bit. Um, but in running a, a magazine, HM Magazine, here's the 25th anniversary copy that happens to have the top 100 Christian rock albums of all time list on it. Um, I would get uh, tapes and vinyl and CDs submitted to me all the time. I had packages that came uh, dressed as a package of meat or steak from the grocery store. It was like a piece of paper, a photograph of a steak uh, shrink wrapped in a little foam uh, tray, just like the meat at the, at the counter that you buy at the grocery store. Uh, I've had other, you know, demo tapes or packages, you know, packaged up really pretty and, and to get attention. And obviously the, the thing about music is the content is the most important thing. You know, getting someone's attention, doing something clever uh, is nice, but if you don't have substance behind it, you know, all that is just like really bad sugary frosting on a bad stale piece of cake. Um, you want the care in the the proof to be in the pudding in the music i remember hearing like uh demo tapes from the band white cross for the first time and hearing rex carroll's shrill guitar leads just jumping out of the speakers uh hearing the vengeance demo for the first time being blown away by this intensity um this band called narnia from canada at least the two or four song cassette tape demo back in the day i really liked um and not to mention seeing bands live for the first time. That is something that you don't get when you're talking about sending your demo tape or your album to a music critic for a potential review. Now, the difficult part, one thing that, that Heaven's Metal Magazine and HM did always was we, we accepted unsolicited demos and tapes. So we got them all the time, on average of one every day, maybe more. Uh, so I have probably the largest collection of Christian hard rock and metal in the world, possibly, just because for 28 years, I was a media outlet that was just getting submissions, one every day. Multiply that times, you know, 28 years times 365. Uh, or let's, say, let's go with uh, mailing days. You know, you have to subtract 52 Sundays from that. So a little over 300 uh, demo tapes or albums uh, every year for 28 years. That's a lot of music I've got. And a bunch of it is just kind of kind of bad. Not great. Um, but anyway, so I think the key to submitting something is having the content be good. You start there. If you've got something good, um, then it should be shared. Um, and then it needs to have 
uh, a label it needs to have like something to identify what this is, who the band is, and contact information. If I like it, I want to be able to get a hold of them and contact them later. Uh, I remember hearing the Me Without You uh, for the first time. I seen them live at Cornerstone. That was, you know, the real eye opener of seeing um, bands. I remember getting this uh, uh, CD demo by this band called Sophia, which was doing Screamo in um, a way that was fit right into everybody else's mold and formula, but I really, really liked it and really thought a lot about them. Uh, they never got signed. Maybe it was too too much, too little, too late for them. But anyway, so there's my little bit about um, demo tapes and submitting music for review. If it's coming um, unsolicited, make sure that the person you're sending it to is going to receive it. And if they do, just make sure what's on it is good. All the little trappings and attention-getting things... Uh, can get some attention, can make memories, and it can be fun putting it together. But in the end, the content, the, the substance has got to be there. So, let's talk about some of your favorite unsigned band releases, or your favorite albums of all time, and how you first heard about it, or how you acquired it for the very, very first time. Join the discussion.